What type of music does gold listen to? Uh, heavy metal. What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to break down Guild Traders because I'm back from San Diego and the first thing that I see in a Facebook group is a fierce fight over an auction house system and removal of the Guild Traders and people going back and forth as to the necessity of one or the other and how they could be implemented. And I wanted to kind of break down the math of this because instead of getting angry and kind of intertwined into the logistics of those things, I thought to myself, well, if we did have a guild auction house, how much would have to be taken each week in taxes to currently combat ESO's inflation? And why is combating inflation such an important thing? The Elder Scrolls Online developers, when I asked them this very question in San Diego, they actively monitor how much of each currency each individual player owns, including things like mundane runes. That's why they decided to increase the odds of how much you know, mundane runes you can get by doing overworld farming. So it's important to kind of keep in perspective the developers are actively looking at this as a problem because if any of you have ever played World of Warcraft or RuneScape, you know that if you just let inflation go, it'll go. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Elder Scrolls Online's trading system, it is a decentralized economy where every single individual guild can bid upon a specific guild trader. Now, what's interesting about this is, is they reset weekly. Uh, so every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you are able to bid a blind bid on these guild traders. And the winner of that blind bid will then get the guild trader for a week. Now, what's important is, is that the bids are taken from the economy and destroyed. So if I bid 10 million gold on this guild trader right here and I win, that gold is destroyed. Now, if they bid 9 million, they get to get their 9 million back if they did not win. Now, obviously, I'm just using Monopoly numbers here because if I used real numbers, I would get destroyed. Uh, but it's suffice to say that it takes significant amounts of millions per week to maintain these guild traders. In fact, I went through all of the zones in the Elder Scrolls Online to create kind of a rough estimate as to how many guild traders there were, how much around they're valued at, so I can get an idea as to how much is removed from the economy through guild traders each week. It's important to note that removal of gold from the economy is what keeps inflation from becoming detrimental. And why the developers don't want inflation to become bad is, is that if you're a returning player, 100,000 gold, you, you know, back a year ago, is about where 100,000 gold is today. Imagine if you farm 10 million gold on Xbox and then you take a year off of ESO and now your 10 million gold only gets you about what 2 million gold would. It would just create this cycle of problems for returning players returning back into the game. And I'll give you a perfect example of how ESO's inflation is. The same sets and prices of Deadly Strike, I've been selling it for five years now. I am selling it for pretty much the exact same price five years later. In fact, it's actually slightly cheaper because of the sticker book. So let's break down the numbers. And for the curious among you, there's about 197 guild traders in the Elder Scrolls Online. Some are worth hundreds of thousands of gold. Some are worth millions of gold. So breaking down and adding them all up is definitely a time-consuming process. So we're just going to kind of give our best estimate here, and then we're going to throw that forward. And we also kind of need to note too, there is a listing fee, which is currently 1%. You can see if I was to list this up for 600 gold, I would have to pay a listing fee of six gold. Uh, it's just important to note that because if we were to create a new guild trader system, kind of like an auction house, we're already going to have a tax rate. So we're going to already be probably at a default 1%. But let's then talk about how much gold would need to be removed by the guild hall by breaking down some other numbers. And the other number was actually through the Tamriel Savings Company. I reached out to them because I wanted to know the total amount of trades in gold each week that were occurring. The reason for this is because if we're going to create some new auction house system, we're going to need to know how what the tax rate would have to be to try to create some sort of system that would operate in that function. The reason for that is, is because we need to remove gold from the ESO economy. I'll talk about why later in the video and some other examples in different games. But the real reason is, is that if we know what the inflationary rates are going to be, we can know what the tax rate would have to be for this new system. And then we could determine if it would A, be worth it. And then B, we could determine if it's feasible to do 
or if people would subvert the system, which is my main fear, but we'll get to that. And that number was 2,187,724,114 gold. So that is the total amount of gold that was traded through guild traders in purchases throughout the week. It's important to note that number because that's our base number for how much gold is traded on the Xbox and a server. And I am using Xbox as an example because I just know the data here. I know the guild traders listings. I know around how much people are bidding for these and therefore I can help tabulate some of this data that we can take to determine how much we would need if we were going to make a guild trader auction. And thankfully, the math is actually not too terrible. If you were to calculate all the guild traders and give a rough estimate, kind of leaning towards their high end as to how much inflation is removed from the ESO economy each week on Xbox and A, it is about 1 billion. So we have 1 billion gold and 2.187 billion gold as our two numbers here, so which actually makes the math relatively easy. And we can kind of get an idea as to what we would need to do and the answer is relatively straightforward. If there was going to be an ESO guild auction house, it would need to have somewhere between 50 and 60% of a house cut on each item listed. So if you listed an item for 100,000 gold, your take home would be somewhere between 40 and 50,000 gold, uh, depending. And they could maybe do this variably, depending on the economy, how things were going that week. But that is our current baseline for how much would have to be removed to kind of keep the economy from becoming hyperinflated, which I'm sure, as you can imagine, may perturb people in quite a few ways. Because honestly, if that's going to be how much is removed from an auction house or this new kind of grand exchange or whatever you want to refer to it as, people are probably going to subvert that system and trade with each other anyway, meaning that there will be no house cut because Zenimax is not having trades done through their formalized auction house, people are probably going to revert back in the old days of old school MMOs where they did a lot of trading through zone chats. They would trade through guilds where they would trade with each other. You know, they may have somebody that's dedicated to selling uh, gold upgrade materials and you would just reach out to them. They would mail you some, you'd mail them the gold, but then this causes a problem. Now you're creating a secondary untaxed market which then means the developers have another couple options. They can raise the taxes on how many people are using the auction house to offset the people who are intentionally subverting it by raising the cut maybe to 70% of how much the house takeaway would be, meaning that if you traded something for 100,000 gold, you would get 30. Uh, or they could prevent you from selling items to other players except through this system. And neither one of those options is actually very enticing for the average player. I know that the current guild trader system gets quite a lot of flack, but there's a reason why it's in place. And I wanted to break that down because a lot of people dislike the Elder Scrolls Online's trade system. And let's talk about the alternatives and why they just don't work. And a lot of my inspiration actually came from articles. Uh, one of them was this, which I will link in the comments below, where they break down why hyperinflation is so bad. And in fact, they actually were motivated to write this based on a Minecraft server. So that just gives you an idea that you can really have hyperinflation on any video game. And the reason for that is, is because currency is essentially created out of nothing. There's no federal reserve when you're out questing in the Elder Scrolls Online that determines how much gold you get. There's no salary, there's no social security, there's no taxes that are taken away. Uh, by any of these guilds, so a lot of it has to be regulated through a system. The Elder Scrolls Online has determined that their primary system for combating inflation is their guild traders because the winning bids are destroyed, but other games do other things. Let's break them down. So let us start with RuneScape. Now, RuneScape has an item called Bonds. These basically allow you to get ESO Plus from another player, and you can buy and sell them on the open market. I wanted to point this out here because you may notice something, and that is they have become hyperinflated. This is a huge problem because this is a general trend that gold is becoming less valuable on RuneScape. And the reason for this is, is let's say you had 30 million gold and you took a break in January of 2021, and then you wanted to come back by buying a bond in, let's say, January of 2022, one year later. Now you need to pay 60 million. So essentially, your gold value has become halved in that time period, where now you need to pay double 
if you want to be able to continually buy memberships with the items and resources that you have at your disposal. The problem is, is that RuneScape's Grand Exchange is only 2%. Now, RuneScape does some other things to combat inflation that the Elder Scrolls Online could look into, and let's talk about what those are. And so back in the article that we were referencing, they actually give some ideas. Now, some of these are probably not feasible, their first one being if your game has a finite amount of money, then things will be fine. However, there's no real way for Zenimax to create a finite amount of money. Uh, they also talk about taxes, so when you're doing trades, there could be taxes, maybe increasing COD fees, maybe always having a fee if you're trading between a player. Let's say if I'm just donating you 100 draw wax, maybe you had to pay taxes on that regardless, similar to the IRS's gifting system. You can also see that they could add consumables because another way that they could draw money out of the economy is they could basically make you purchase things from NPCs because that would then take things out of the economy. The only problem with that is, is that while in RuneScape actually does this to a pretty good extent, if you apply this to the Elder Scrolls Online, you're going to probably run into some problems, because you're going to now be taking away from the player-driven economy, because at the end of the day, if you're buying something from an NPC, you're now not buying it from a player. So now you're just kind of increasing how much of the economy is now done through NPCs, and not done through players, meaning that players are not going to be able to earn as much money. They also talk about things like rare items, or abandon the old currency and switch to a barter system, which would, of course, be a complete catastrophe <laughs> if they had tried to do this. Now, adding rare items, that is perfectly, totally fine if they wanted to do something like that. They talk about the uh, RuneScape's rather uh, party hat economy, um, they don't actually have any examples for getting rid of the old currency because no game has really gone and reverted back to the old currencies uh, that I could find an example of. I do want to note, though, another chart. This is actually EVE Online, and this is over uh, another period of time, too. This is a larger period of time, but this is July 2013 all the way up until July 2019. Uh, but you can see a general trend where inflation just continues to rock the economy and then therefore has detrimental things on the their player base. And why I think that ESO has done what they've done specifically is they always want to cater to that new and returning player. And if a new and returning player has to constantly work harder and constantly has to earn more and more gold to come back to get the same amount of items or to have a start in the Elder Scrolls Online and have the same amount of items, that can be very difficult for them. And let's take a look at the Elder Scrolls Online economy kind of in action. This is Draw Wax. Now, this is PC prices because they've got the data that I can use pulling their add-ons. And you can see a general decrease over time and some ebbs and flows uh, over time. But you can see these are pretty consistent prices. You don't see a pump and dump. You don't see any sort of just generic increase through the economy. In fact, quite often you see general decreases especially when you consider facts that J December of 2023, that's one of the most played months in the Elder Scrolls Online. There's tons of holiday events. People are off of work. People are off of school. So that's one of the most played months in the game. The fact that the prices are pretty cheap down there just goes to show you that the ESO economy is fighting inflation at a rate that you would want to see it doing that. Um, and I say this as somebody who wishes that there was a less complex system to explain these systems to new players, because I don't like having to explain to everybody that joins the Elder Scrolls Online, these are how trade guilds work, these are how you're able to essentially prevent yourself from you know, not being involved in the ESO economy, this is why dues are important, and so on and so on. I don't necessarily enjoy the system from it, you know, the conceptual sta stance that it could be hard to explain to new players, but when you look at its driven data and what's behind it, you can see that it is very friendly to new and returning players and even endgame players who constantly don't have to really worry that their you know, millions of gold are not going to turn into basically hundreds of thousands of gold in value. But everyone, that's where I leave you for today. That has been my spiel on the inflation inside of the Elder Scrolls Online economy. And how, basically, if you wanted to make a new system, it's not as simple as, well, just add an auction house. Well, you're going to have to do quite a few other things if you're going to want to see a system like that implemented. You may even have to go so far as to any time somebody gifts 
somebody anything in the Elder Scrolls Online that you add a tax on top of it, a house cut potentially. You uh, you know have a, a system that has fifty to sixty percent taxes already baked into it. Prevent people from trading items in zone chat. There would be tons of crazy things that may need to be implemented to have this come true. And to give you a quick example as to seeing this in the game, a lot of guild traders that are in Mournhold prevent you from actually talking about and listing items in their general chats. They want all of the sales to be done through their guild trader because anything that's sold to another player in their general chat essentially is untaxed income that they don't get any sort of part of. And I only mention that not to say if it's right or wrong, just to give you an example as to even the guilds inside of the game that are constantly you know, pushing forward the economy, they are still having to deal with inflation and making sure that they can get as much gold as possible, that therefore that they can bid as high as possible to prevent them from being kicked out of Mournhold. But everyone, thank you guys so much again for watching. I hope that this was insightful. If you would like any further breakdowns of the Elder Scrolls Online economy, I would be more than happy to dig deeper and kind of give the specific math. This has just been more of a general overview. Unfortunately, the actual post that I wanted to make this as a response to has been deleted. Um, so <laughs> that kind of sucks because it would have been nice to just kind of post this as more of a auditory response. You know, this is why, you know, we would need to look at X, Y, and Z thing. Um, but, you know, we'll take what we can get. I hope this was helpful. And if you do have suggestions, I do think that the developers are open to them because I asked them these very questions when I went to the San Diego event. And they tell me that they track how many players have ESO Gold. How much do they have? What are they using it on? How much do they keep on their characters? How much are guild traders bidding? How much is being removed from the economy? How much is being added to the economy? They have a basically a whole area of their development team dedicated to this concept. I don't think that there's anything that they aren't willing to try as long as it makes sense. And I got that impression when I asked them, but they did say that it is as complex as we were talking about it in this video, where you would have to take in not just the factors of, well, maybe adding a 50 to 60% tax rate of a guild auction house, but also how do you then prevent players from subverting that auction house and just trading with each other and therefore causing inflation in other ways. So that's the complexities of all these problems. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the comments below. Because as always, all you have to do to enter is leave a comment in the comments below. I was even thinking to myself, what if we had an auction house in addition to our current guild trader system, but maybe the auction takes significant taxes away, but therefore you can subvert the guild trader system. I wasn't sure on if I thought that something like that could work. I kind of went back and forth in my head as to why it was a good idea, but you let me know what you think would work best for the Elder Scrolls Online, or just tell me how your day was, or if you have any specific questions about the San Diego event, I'll be making a dedicated video to that on all the questions that I was able to ask and get feedback on. The second thing is just make sure you're subscribed slash follow on Twitch and Twitter for two additional entries. And the third thing, look for a hidden word to be flashed up on the screen. If you're the first person to comment that word, you will win. Thank you guys so much uh, for watching. It's good to be back inside my own home, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.